Brian Windhorst and Greg Schwartz say that the Chicago Bulls are in a rebuild, and they don't even realize it. We're going to talk about that. Plus, we're going to, of course, recap the game last night. The Chicago Bulls lost to the Phoenix Suns. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content. So the Chicago Bulls play like crap down the stretch of a game against the Phoenix Suns, right? And this is one of those losses where I said over in the post game show, the live post game show, that the Bulls played with a lot of heart in this game. And I do think with the way that the Bulls played, throughout this game with just showing some resiliency and things like that, they will win a lot of games playing like that. Now, it was not enough last night against the Phoenix Suns, and some of that was due to some of our our core players, and we're going to talk about that. But before we talk about the negative, I got to use my time to talk about the amazing night that Alice Caruso had for the Chicago Bulls. It was not something that that can just – you. the stat sheet still shows that he has a really good night, right? And so it's one of those things that the stat sheet does reflect just how impactful he was, but it was even more than that if you actually watch the game. We're talking about Alice Caruso's defense, getting frozen turnovers, getting easy shots for other people. Like, it was just time periods where Alice Caruso was guarding KD, and KD could not score on Alice Caruso. Once they made the switch to Alice Caruso on KD every play, uh, KD did not score down the stretch of the game. Now, unfortunately, neither did Zach Levine, but we'll talk about that. But Alice Cruz, on top of just the brand of defense and the things that don't show up in the stat sheet, he had 19 points, four rebounds, two assists, three steals, two blocks. Alice Cruz was just a, a, a marvelous player coming off the bench for the Chicago Bulls last night. Like, watching him getting to that rhythm, it's just so fun as a, as a fan of the team to watch a player get into that type of momentum, that type of, of rhythm, and just really not, and, and not be a star-level player but completely have a star-level impact on that game last night. That's what Alex Caruso had, and it was just, it was such a fun way to watch him play. And I wish that we would have come out with the win to really celebrate that that play that Alex Caruso had. But listen, Caruso played excellently. And overall, the team, listen, the bench unit didn't score a lot of points, but that defense was elite. At one point in time, the uh, Chicago Bulls bench was like negative 48 points, whereas the, I mean, the, the starters were negative 48, while the Bulls bench was positive 48. The bench is what kept us. Th- their level of play is what kept us in this game. And we only have one double-digit score coming off the bench, and that's Alex Caruso. You also have uh, Javon, uh, Javon Carter with eight points. And then, you know, uh, Patrick Williams, Andre Drummond with three and two points, respectively. Andre Drummond only playing 12 minutes in this game. But it is what it is. We know that comes sometimes with, with uh, Andre Drummond. But the Bulls starters, and while the core three all had over 20 points. You look at DeMar DeRozan, 6 of 20, 1 of 4 from three-point range. He had seven assists, two rebounds, one steal, two blocks, and 22 points. Solid. Not great, but solid night, right? Nikola Vucevic, 11 of 18. He had six rebounds, three assists, one steal uh, in that game, and 26 points, leading the Chicago Bulls in scoring. And then you had Zach Levine going 7 of 13 for 22 points, eight assists, eight rebounds, one steal. But the key thing in this is that, A, in no quarter in this game did any of the Bulls' core three players score double, more than one of them score double-digit points, right? Again, that 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 thing we keep seeing from this team where it's like the your turn, my turn thing, right? On top of that, while Zach Levine did have 22 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, flirting with a triple-double, the fact of the matter is Zach Levine had an amazing third quarter. Let me be clear. Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic were the only reasons why when the Phoenix Suns made their push in the third quarter that it didn't turn into a blowout loss, right? Zach Levine's third quarter in this game, he went five of six from the field, three of four from three-point range for 15 points, and Nikola Vucevic went three of three for seven points. There was a stre- uh, there was a period there where we, as a team, scored 19 points, and all 19 of those points came from either Nikola Vucevic or Zach Levine. But then it changed in the fourth quarter and uh, overtime for Zach Levine. In the fourth quarter, Zach Levine going zero for three from the field, 0 of two, from three-point range, four turnovers in just the third quarter, and no points, none. And then in the overtime period, Zach Levine didn't even attempt a shot in the overtime period, playing all five minutes of overtime. And that is where you cannot listen. That's unacceptable. 
and now I, I'm not somebody who's going to put this loss entirely on Zach Levine because I saw the defensive uh, miss, uh, mishaps that happened th- through the team, the turnovers that weren't caused by Zach Levine, even though he had a lot of them, especially in that fourth quarter with four turnovers. But at the end of the day, Zach just, what, what did I say coming into the season? For those that have watched me for a while, I said that it wasn't about a points per game total for Zach Levine for me. It was about seeing Zach Levine step up in the, in the moments that we needed the most. In that third quarter, I was like, hey, we may get that this game. And then the fourth quarter, it just all went to shit. Zach Levine shit the bed in the fourth quarter and in overtime. And it's unfortunate because you need to see more from your player that's making over $40 million. And then listen, I, I know this is probably going to be triggering for some people, especially what's his name, Mohammed, who anytime you say anything about uh, negative about DeMar DeRozan, he gets his panties in a twist. But DeMar DeRozan is taking a step back. Now, I don't just mean because of the last second shot that he missed no it's a, it's a shot with seven seven seconds left it is what it is there but if you watch this game from from DeMar DeRozan and several games from DeMar DeRozan the pump fake isn't working he's not going to it as much the lift is different the taking players off the dribble isn't as as clean as what it used to be it, it it's something going on there and that decline that, that many players have that's natural right and that's not to say that he still can't be an impact when he's still not going to have huge games because he is but you're starting to notice that Z- that DeMar DeRozan is absolutely taking a step back. A minor one, right? It's not this huge fall off, right? And I know some people are going to take it that way, but he's absolutely taking a step back, right? So when you have your $40 million player, over $40 million, give you zero points in the fourth quarter and overtime, the player that usually saves your bacon down the clutch in DeMar DeRozan isn't able to really do it at that level anymore, at least not what we've seen outside of one game. It, it, it it's it's hard. Like yes, Alice Caruso played amazingly well, but you it, you expect more from a core three players who are supposed to be what the, the 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 players that your team's built around. And then on top of that, one thing I didn't mention: the Bulls get out to eighteen point deficit to start the game. Now yes, they're able to battle back, and I want to give them their props for battling it back because for periods last season and start of this season, I wouldn't have bet on the Bulls to be able to battle back after starting out with that level of deficit. But it's just. The execution from this team continues to be piss poor. And listen, one person who's not going to be cleared of my wrath either is not really. I'm not really all that pissed off. But it's Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan's coaching is shitty. It just is. Like, and it, no, is it all on him? No, it's not. Every single thing with this team is not wrong. It's not because of Billy Donovan. But the fact of the matter is, is good to great coaching can get you out of some of these flaws. And we just don't see that from Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan just... He's just such a, 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 I don't even know what to say. If the game plan works, he's going to look amazing. If his initial game plan does not work, the adjustments, the lack thereof from adjustments, is going to make it look like a complete shit show. And that's what we're seeing from this team. Now, with that said, right, Brian Windhorst said this, this was that quote uh, from him, the Chicago Bulls are in a rebuild and don't even know it. And then you have Greg Schwartz writing an article saying this, at some point, Chicago will be forced to look at itself in the mirror and admit that this course simply doesn't work without Lonzo Ball. Not enough was done in the offseason to address the point guard position. Patrick Williams is taking a step back, and the defense is off to a 23rd ranked start. Instead of the iconic bullhead logo, Chicago is probably better represented by a hamster running on a wheel. Things are technically happening, but no progress is actually being made. Listen here. If that last part isn't par, things are happening, but no progress is being made. Right. And I know it's still a very early part of the season, but the, I think also hearing that the Bulls are in a rebuild and don't even know it is the thing. Right. Because this team, contrary to what some people are going to say, isn't trying to tank. They ain't trying. The Bulls are trying to win basketball games. This is a team that technically now it's front office built to win now and the winning ain't coming. It's not coming. So when you have that type of when you have this type of roster that you have constructed to try to win now and you clearly see that things aren't working, what did I say? You didn't have a single quarter in this game where any any more than one member of the core three scored in double digits because it's this, it, it, like when one's going, the other one isn't like, and, and we just don't have that. Now, to its credit, it wasn't just the core three. Nobody scored in double. No, we never had a quarter of multiple players scoring in double digits. So there's that, right? But really, when you look at it, this team is just simply not working. It isn't. It isn't working. And could they still figure it out? Kobe White is growing as a point guard. Absolutely. We've talked about that. But Kobe White also in this game. Let's talk about the first half. Kobe White had an amazing first half in this game. The problem was is that in the second half, 
The numbers didn't change, meaning he didn't really add anything. In the first half of this game, Kobe White had 11 points going 5 of 9 from the field. Uh, he had, he had uh, 3 rebounds, nine, uh, 4 assists, and one, 1 turnover, right? 1 turnover. That was the first half. The second half of this game, the whole second half, Kobe White went 0 of 2, 0 of 1 from 3-point range. He chipped in another rebound, another assist, and that's it. Everything else stayed the exact same. And I've told you guys and I've talked to you guys about the, the on-off with Kobe and DeMar on the court. It just doesn't work together. You are having so many pieces of this roster. DeMar and Kobe don't work together, right? That's in the statistics. Uh, DeMar and, and Vooch like to generate and start their offense from the same position. They take shots from different areas, but, but Vooch typically likes to start at that elbow, the same place that, that DeMar likes to shoot at, right? So you have that. You have the Zach and Vooch thing, which I think that that could work a little bit better with an actual point guard in there. Can, and we've seen flashes of that working, but still, the combination of everything just is not working. And at some point, you have to look at the ingredients and say, there ain't shit that I can cook with these ingredients that's going to give me anything different than what I can get you, right? So I'm not saying, I'm not with the, my, my co-host over on Locked on Bulls or Pat, who's full rebuild at this point. But I am saying that something needs to drastically happen with this core. And I don't know if that, what well, I have a whole video on it. I don't know if this front office is ready and prepared to make the tough decisions because they still are fall. They are, they are in love with this roster. And so at the end of the day, like when you have a roster that's, that's built to compete, that's built because you thought it was win now and you have a high probability of maybe even missing the play in tournament, that is a concerning because at that point you have to look at what you built and realize it just ain't working. And we have not seen. AK and Eversley get to the point yet where it seems like they are ready to realize and admit this ain't working. We got to make changes. We got to make some serious changes. What is DeMar worth? What is, what is whoever, right? And that is the thing. This front office cannot continue to sit on its hands and watch this team struggle with no direction. And I get it. We talked about it over uh, with, with uh, when I had uh, Kevin Anderson on, right? Is that the young players on this team, none of them have developed to the point to where you can say, hey, this is what we can move forward and build around. And because of that, I do still think that a retool is more likely than a rebuild. But then you even still got to ask yourself, what is, what, what is that going to do? This front office up until this point has not drafted well in, in the results that we see, right? And that's, that's concerning, especially when you're, you're, we've never been a huge free agent destination. You don't seem like you're going to be trying to make a, a, a to trade your draft assets and try to make a move for a disgruntled star on another team and hope you can convince them to stay here because then you got to convince them and sell them on this shit show that we've been dealing with for now three seasons. At the end of the day, the front office has to do pick a different. I could say all day. I used to always say they have to pick a direction. They did pick a direction. The direction was this core, but they have to now move off that and pivot and choose a different direction because this direction ain't leading us into a, into a fucking outhouse full of shit. That's where this direction is currently leading us. And until the front office is willing and ready and able to move off of it, this is where we are. This is our lot in life, unfortunately, right? This is where we currently are. And it's still a young season. I want to be clear on that. I always try to keep a level head on the fact that it's still a very young season for the Chicago Bulls. But the fact of the matter is, like, coming out of this home stretch, right, which we still got five out of our next six games are at home, but leading up until Christmas, which is what Kevin Anderson said, you really have to be taking a hard look at this roster and asking yourself, is the assets you can get back for some of these players, right? Because also in the same article from Greg Schwartz, he was the, the, the thesis of that article was saying that at some point the Bulls are going to have to take advantage of what they can get for Zach Levine out in the open market and get as many assets back so they can have to store up for their rebuild that they're going to have to eventually admit that they're in. I'm not necessarily saying that at this point, that that's the route I see this team going, but you do have to look at what can you get out there. And so Listen, we already know, especially with the way that Alice Caruso performed, the Bulls want at least two first-round picks back for Alice Caruso. DeMar DeRozan, you'll see because he's an expiring contract and an older player, I don't know if you can get first back, but maybe you can get a young, promising player so they can get a more veteran piece in there depending on what team you partner with. When it comes to Zach, I do think that this team is probably not going to move off Zach Levine, at least not this season, unless things go out. Like, for example, the Bulls still have, let's say they have 10 wins by Christmas. At that point, Everybody got head that needs to be on the chopping block, and including Billy Donovan and including AK and Eversley to a point. But again, that would have to mean that Jerry Reinsdorf would have to actually wake up and say, hey, what's going on with my Chicago Bulls team that I own? Oh, we suck. Oh, the fans don't, they don't, they don't care. Oh, what, what does the checkbook say? Are we still getting money? At the end of the day, right, drafting well is always the best route. You have to draft well 
for your team to really have sustained success. This team decided to try to go win now, right? And they built a team that a version of it was working until Lonzo went down. But then Lonzo is such a unique player that it's not just easy to just replace what Lonzo Ball brought. And so when you have the flaws that you have on this team, the front office can't keep sitting on the goddamn toilet. They got to get up off the bench and get in the goddamn game and realize what is happening with this. Everybody else sees it. This core ceiling is is not really increasing the way that that they thought it would. What improving in the margins? Javon Carter, Torrey Craig improving in those margins. Bringing now Kobe at the starting point guard, even though Kobe's still growing, it has not really increased the ceiling visibly yet for the Chicago Bulls. And I understand not wanting to completely make a, a knee jerk reaction move yet nine games into the season. I completely understand that. But when you get towards 20, 25 games, and if this thing is still the same and the front office is still sitting on their hands, I don't even know what to say at that point. Me, as being a a more optimistic fan, and I try to be very level-headed, it may not be Hayes that's hosting this show anymore. It may end up being Petty Roosevelt that ends up holding the show, and I don't want that for anybody. I don't want that for me, right? And I hate that I'm at this place with this team where I'm so disappointed in it that it's like it doesn't even really phase me anymore right I'm frustrated and when I have to verbalize it I will but like I just watch this team and I'm just like it's not even really surprising for me it's not surprising and so to hear that the Bulls may be in a rebuild a rebuild that they don't realize the unknowing rebuild it really just brings together so much for this team and where we currently are right and I know we have a lot of players that do have talent we have players that are prideful. We have players that do want to win. I do believe that these players want to win, that they want to figure out a way to make this work with this core because I do think that they like each other, right? But at the end of the day, you got it when you're a losing franchise, at some point you have to realize it and you have to set, make the decision to want to win more than what you than you wanting to just hold on to players that you like as guys, right? What's more important? What are we doing this for? You have to ask yourself that. Is it more important to get to a place of being a winning franchise is it, or is it more important to keep, keep, to keep guys around just because you either drafted them or you like them? That's a tough question that the front office has to ask as we remain and go through the rest of the season. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Sound off on the mailbag. I want to hear how you guys are feeling as well. We'll tell you how to get those in towards the end here. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media.